So there's been lots of discussion at this meeting about whether we're now in a position to cure myeloma. And so one of the sessions we were had today was what are the potential barriers to a cure? And so um, I was discussing this as kind of the introductory. And I kind of thought that there were maybe five or six different barriers to a cure. We've clearly come a long way, but we have to remember that we have an older patient population who has many comorbidities. Um, and so when we're thinking about how we're going to cure those patients, we kind of need to take those into an account. So some of the barriers that are around our lack of knowledge about the biology. We certainly know a lot about it. We know a lot about the genetics. We know a lot about the driving events. And we know a lot about some of the vulnerabilities of the myeloma cell and the microenvironment. But we still need to learn more about that, particularly with these new immunotherapies coming through. One of the other barriers is about, at the moment, many of our patients present very late. And so um, by that point, they have a lot of end organ damage. And we're fortunate that we've got many precursor disorders, such as MGUS and smoldering myeloma. And so the question is, is whether we can use that knowledge, not only in the lab, but also in the clinic, to try and target those diseases. And we heard a little bit about the work that the Iceland group are doing with iStop and how that's really looking at potential ways for screening myeloma patients or Muggers patients and what that, um, those implications may be moving forward. So could it be something more like cervical cancer or prostate cancer where we get in there early? And then some of the other barriers are really around our healthcare systems and the way that we're maybe going to be developing new drugs, because at the moment we develop our drugs in the um, end relapse kind of setting. If we're thinking about a cure, we need to develop those right up front and we need to be thinking about using them first. And what's that going to mean? How are, how are our payers and our insurance companies going to take that? And indeed, what's going to happen to our outpatient clinics as these therapies, are they going to be outpatient based, inpatient based, oral, IV, how are we going to manage all of that and how are we going to make sure that we've got all of those pieces in place as we kind of move forward with these new exciting things. So we were trying to unpick all of those different things. Huge complicated area, but so much optimism and amazing that we can actually start talking about a cure.